and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, November 16th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of Homicide Division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. We had an hour and three minutes before we could go home. It was a quiet night. It looked like it might stay that way. We've got to get that radio in the car fixed. It's getting worse all the time. Yeah, I know. We'll send it over to the radio shop in the morning, huh? Almost knocked me out of the seat when I tried to call in. You press that little button on the mic, boom, you get a shot. Yeah, I was out with Lopez last night. He got quite a jolt, too. Yeah. Must be a short someplace. Oh, it's got to be fixed. I put almost a dollar's worth of dimes in the phone calling in. This keeps up. I'm going to have to go without lunch. Yeah. You want to give me a hand with these reports so we can get out of here? I'm with you. Hot shot. I got it. No. A robbery call. I was afraid we were going to have to go out. All I want to do is go home and get to sleep. Well, you go to work with that pencil, we ought to get out of here about 12.30 anyway. All right. I got it. Homicide, Smith. Yeah? What's that address? Yeah? Okay, we'll check it out. Grab your hat. What do you got? Slugging, Elysian Park. Well? Yeah. Woman, they found her lying in the gutter. She's still alive? She was when they got the call. We better hurry, though. Yeah? They don't know how long she's gonna last. From one of the felony officers who had answered the call, we found that the victim had been sprawled in the street, her head in the gutter. The officer described the victim as a woman in her early 40s. He went on to say that the clothes she wore looked expensive, but they were badly torn. When she was found, her left shoe was missing and there was no sign of any purse or wallet. None of the people who'd gathered in the crowd could give us an identification of her. The nearest house to the place where the victim was found was at least 300 feet down the street. We talked to the people in the crowd and we found that the woman who had made the original call was still supposed to be in the area. From one of the people, a Mrs. Roger Heflin, we found that the man who had made the call to the complaint board was waiting to see us. He was at the Heflin house. The man identified himself as Cecil Furnham. Mrs. Heflin asked us inside, but we told her we could get the information we needed on the porch. All right, Furnham, you want to tell us what happened? Well, I don't know. Well, you called the police, didn't you? Yeah, I called them. You found her? Yeah, she was lying there in the street like that. I got scared and called the police. I thought maybe she was dead. What were you doing up there this time of night? Just walking around. You live around there? No. Where do you live? I don't know. What's that? Well, I don't know. We got a room down on Crosley Lane, I think. Well, aren't you sure? Huh? Don't you know where you live? Yeah, I got a room. Well, now, where is it? Down on Crosley Lane, I think. You got any identification on you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here's my wallet. Any money in that? No. This your true name, Cecil August Furnham? Yeah. Who's Margaret Furnham? What? Margaret Furnham. Who's she? My sister. This her address here on the card? Yeah. You aren't going to tell her, are you? You aren't going to tell her. Why? Well, she'd be pretty sore about it if you did. She don't like for me to get mixed up with the cops. She don't like it at all. You ever spent any time in any institution? What? Mental institution. Yeah, I was in a sanitarium once. Where? Back east. When'd you get out? Long time ago. Three days. I have been there for a long time. What'd they send you to the hospital for? I've never been in no hospital. You just told us you'd been in a sanitarium, didn't you? That was to get well. Yeah, we know that. To get well from what? They thought I was bothering people. Were you? No, I didn't hurt anybody. They say you did? Yeah. Who? A lady, they said I hit her. Did you hit her? What? Did you hit the woman? No, I never hurt anybody. The woman you found tonight, do you know her? You aren't going to tell my sister, are you? Do you know the woman? What woman? Now, you listen, fella. Pay attention. The woman you found tonight, do you know her? Oh, yeah. I've known her for a long time. What's her name? Grace. What's her last name? What? Do you know her last name? 
You know, I've never really been in a sanitarium. I just told you that. You under a doctor's care now? Oh, no. I got real well at the sanitarium, real well. They let me go. Where's this Grace live? I think on Effie Street. I think that's where it is, Effie Street. You know the house? I was gonna go up there one night and punch her old man in the nose, you know, because he hit Grace. I was plenty sore about it. He gave her a black eye. But I didn't, you know why? You tell me. Because I thought my sister'd get mad at me. She always gets mad when I get in fights and when she can't tell whether I mean something or not. Real mad. Mm-hmm. There was a guy at the hospital. He was funny. He had a piece of inner tube and he wore it like a hat, you know? Tell me something, Fernum. Yeah? Did you really hit that woman? You mean Grace, is that what you mean? That's what I mean. I met her tonight and she asked me to take a walk with her. Take a walk, that's all. And all of a sudden she was lying on the ground. I was pretty drunk, I didn't know what happened. Just all of a sudden she was there. I got scared, so I called the cops. But I didn't hit her. I wouldn't do a thing like that to Grace. You believe that, don't you? Don't you? You got to because it's the truth. Yeah. Sure, it's the truth, every word. Is it? While one of the officers from a radio unit stood by with Cecil Furnham, we talked with Sergeant Jay Allen from the crime lab. He told us that his crew was unable to find any useful physical evidence. The area was searched, but the victim's left shoe and her purse could not be found. Word had been received from General Hospital that the woman was in a deep coma and could not be questioned. 1.10 a.m., we took Cecil Furnham and had him detained at the city jail pending further investigation. A check of his record showed that he'd been sent to a state mental hospital in the Midwest on two occasions for charges of molesting and assault with a deadly weapon. He had been released into the custody of his sister three months previously. Before he was taken to the main jail, we got the name of the bar where he said he'd met the woman he called Grace. 1.40 a.m., Frank and I drove out to the place. It was located on Sunset Boulevard near Echo Park. The bartender was getting ready to close. I'm Emil Lansing. What do you want? It's not about that lousy Jackie, is it? How's that? You're cops, aren't you? Isn't this about Jackie? We're police officers, yes, sir. You gotta understand, I thought he was an actor, you know? I thought he was just hanging around the place to take work calls. That's what he told me. I didn't have no way of knowing different. It's the truth. We don't know anything about this Jackie. We'd like to ask you some questions about a man named Cecil Furnham. That crackpot. You know, I thought you were after me because of Jackie. Yeah. You see, he's a book. All the time he's using my phone, and I don't know it. Yesterday, a couple of vice cops come in and put the arm on him. Yeah. From what I hear, he's lucky he got arrested. Must have lost his shirt yesterday. Horse came in that paid 20 to 1. Boy, he really must have had it. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you know about Cecil Furnham? Creep, real creep. Did you see him tonight? Yeah, he was in. What time? Let's see. But just before the fight on TV, that'd make it about 6.45. Yeah, about then, 6.45. He come in alone? Always does. He don't have no friends. What time did he leave, would you remember? He stayed around and watched the fight. I guess it must have been about 10.30, around 11 when he left. You know a woman named Grace? Who? Grace. We understand she's in here quite a bit. We got a couple of Graces come in here. What shoes look like? Oh, about 35. Wears a tweed coat. Well, let's see. Yeah, that'd be Grace Dillon. Dillon? Yeah, she's pretty much of a regular. Is that D-I-L-L-O-N? Yeah, I guess that's the way you spell it. What's all the questions? Something wrong? What time was she in here tonight? I guess she came in about 8 o'clock. What time she leave? 10.30, 10.45. She leave alone? A lot of people in here with the fights. Let me think. No, she left with that Cecil. You know where she lives? Not right off. I can look it up. If you would, please. We keep a list of all the people who come in, send them announcements about things, like when we have a new piano player, things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. A, B, C. Now, oh, here it is. Dexter, Darby, Gibbs. Just that guy come in and pick up that tab we're carrying. Let me see. Oh, yeah, here it is. Grace Dillon, 907 Effie Street. 907, huh? That's right. Thanks. You can take the card if you want. Don't make any difference to me if she never comes back. The way she carried on tonight, people just don't understand. What's that? You can serve them just so much. After that, you're pouring a hundred proof trouble. You gotta shut them off sometime. Uh-huh. She ever come in here with her husband? Dillon? Yeah. A Couple of times. Quite a while ago, though. They came in late one night, sat back there in the booth, had a couple of belts, got real loud, some kind of an argument. I finally had to go back and ask them to go out. He's a real bum. He's mean. Yeah. 
The kind of a guy where to know him is to hate him. You know how I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you know if Dylan ever hit his wife? Sure. She came in here one night with a mouse that had no end. Said her old man gave it to her. Say, what's this all about anyway? There's something wrong with Grace? Well, we don't know yet. Let me give you this for free. If there's anything happened to her, six to him, even if it was her old man. Is that right? Real bum. He's mean. Anything wrong, and it's him that caused it. You better talk to him. You'll find out. That's all you gotta do. Just talk to him. Something else comes first. What? We gotta find him. Two twenty-six a.m. We got a description of the victim's husband, and we checked the name through R and I. We were unable to come up with any criminal record for him. Frank and I drove out to the address given us by the bartender. It was a large English stucco house five blocks from where Grace Dillon had been found. The woman who answered the door said she was Paula Dreyer, a babysitter. We identified ourselves and asked if we could see Herman Dillon. I'm sorry, but he isn't in. Something wrong? Do you know where he is? No, just went out, didn't see. What time did he leave? Guess it was about 10, maybe 10.30. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Mrs. Dillon? Yeah, she was here when I got in. About what time was that? You mean when she left? That's right. 7.30. Did she say where she was going? No. Her and the mister had a fight. She just walked out. Have you heard from her since then? Not a word. Wish they would get back, though. Like to get home myself. Have you worked for the Dillons long? I've been sitting for them about three years. I see. Came in when the baby got home from the hospital. I wonder if you could tell us how Mr. Dillon and his wife get along. Why? Big pardon? Why do you want to know? They done something wrong? A couple of things we have to check out. Seems a funny time to be doing it. Don't you men work during the day? Yes, ma'am. It's just this is kind of important. Oh. Huh? I guess you know what you are doing. Yes, ma'am. Would you tell us about the Dillons, please? Fight all the time. Never been in a house where there's so much fighting. Mm -hmm. What are the quarrels about, would you know? Mostly about her. Mrs. Dillon? That's right. She isn't much of a mother. Don't care about the kids. All the time running around, drinking, and he isn't much better. How do you mean? Same for him. Different clothes. He cares a little more about the kids than she does. At least he don't leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But it ain't a fit home. The two of them all the time arguing, screaming at each other. Not fit at all. Have you been present when any of these fights took place? If you are in the same house, you are present. He yells at her and she walks away. He follows her through the whole house, screaming, threatening at her. Has Mr. Dillon ever hit his wife, would you know? Yeah. A couple of times. And not like slaps either. With his fist closed, like this. I see. Really knocked her around that night. Yeah. Ending up with them standing in here, just screaming at each other, loud as they could. Her telling him he wasn't any good. Him yelling that she was a tramp. When was all this? A week ago. I guess he kind of quieted her down. She must have known he meant what he said. Well, what was that? Gave her a fair warning that he was true, had enough, said it better not happen again. Yeah. If he did, he was gonna kill her. Frank put in a call to the business office and requested that a team of men be sent out to wait for Dylan to return. 3.46 a.m., we checked into the office and put a call into the hospital. Right, thank you very much, Doc. Right, bye. How is she? Well, the doc just finished his examination. She's got a frontal bone fracture, three broken ribs, and cuts and contusions. She gonna be all right? He thinks so. Says she might come out of it at any time. According to him, he thinks she was thrown from a car. Hmm. That would explain the missing shoe and purse. Yeah, it would. Did he say when we can talk to her? No, he didn't. Might not do any good anyway. What do you mean? Well, this kind of a fracture can produce a retrograde amnesia. Not bad, huh? Yeah, she might not remember anything. Frank and I signed out of the office and went home. At 5.13 a.m., I got a call that the husband of the victim, Herman Dillon, had returned home. The officers who called said they were taking him down to the city hall. I got in touch with Frank. By the time we got back to the squad room, Dillon was already there. 
What's this all about, anyway? What are you dragging me out of my house for? A few questions we got to ask you. What's so important you got to go through it at 6 in the morning? When did you see your wife last? About 7.30. That's last night? Yeah, why? How do you and your wife get along? What do you think? We've been married for 10 years. That's no kind of an answer. You're not married. After 10 years, it's an answer. Married 10 years, and it's all the answer you need. Maybe you better spell it out for me, then. After that long, you have a few disagreements. Found to. You know, being together all the time. You and your wife have an argument last night, did you? Yeah. We had a discussion. What about? I don't think that's any of your business. What'd you argue about? Her running around. It wasn't a real argument. Just a discussion. Yeah, well, the way we got it, it was more than that. And you got it wrong. We heard you hit her a couple of times. That's a lie. I might have shoved her a little. She had it coming, though. All the time, running around. We got three kids. Young kids. She doesn't care that for him. Always going out, hanging around those cheap bars, boozing it up. I came home the other night. She'd walked out and left the kids all alone, all by themselves. Didn't even get a sitter for them. Where you been tonight? Baby's teething. That don't make any difference to her. Just lets the poor little kid cry. Let's her sit in her room and bawl. Terrible. Cops were over the other night. One of the neighbors called him. You know what Grace said, you know? You tell us. Said the kid was spoiled. Just spoiled. Kid don't cry like that just because she's spoiled. There's got to be something wrong. Grace wasn't ever much of a mother. All the time she said the kid's got on her nerves. Never paid any attention to him. Always getting somebody else to take care of him. So they tied her down. If she didn't want to be tied down, why'd she get married? Why? Do you know? I wouldn't know. Neither do I. Trying to figure it out for 10 years. 10 of the most miserable years of my life. Where you been tonight? Huh? I said, can you tell us what your movements were tonight, where you went? Why do you have to know that? Can you tell us? Yeah. After Grace and me had the fight, she walked out. I waited for her to come home. And when she didn't, I went out to find her. Did you? Huh? Did you find her, he said. No. Looked all over for her. All the bars along the boulevard. She wasn't there. Where you been since the bar's closed? Walking around. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm trying to make up my mind. About what? What I should do with Grace. Things can't go on like this. They can't. Nobody's happy. Not Grace, not me, not the kids. We've heard from some of your wife's friends that you made threats on her life, is that right? Who told you that? Is it true? I suppose so. If I'd have found her tonight, I'd have maybe killed her. I'd never been so mad before. You see anybody you knew tonight? Huh? When you were walking around, you see anybody you knew? No. Well, then you've got no way to prove where you were, have you? Do I have to do that? Might make things easier for you, yeah. Say, what's this all about, anyway? Why are you asking all these questions about me and Grace? What are you trying to say? Where is she? You know? Yeah. Well, where is she? What's happened to her? She's in the hospital. What for? Looks like she was beaten. You think I did it? Might have been you. Is she alive? Yeah. You think I beat her up? Did you? No. Maybe I wanted to knock some sense into her. But I didn't do it. Can you prove where you were between 10.30 and 11.30? Is that when it happened? Can you prove where you were? No. I don't even know myself. You think I did it? That's what we're trying to find out. Let me see your hands. Why? I said, let me see them, fella. Where'd you get those bruises? I don't know. I don't remember. Well, you better try real hard. This is important. I told you I was drunk. There's only one thing that'll bruise your hands like that. Yeah? You hit someone pretty hard. <laughs> Herman Dillon was detained pending further investigation. We checked with the hospital, but there was no change in Mrs. Dillon's condition. Because of the lack of physical evidence, her testimony was essential in apprehending the person who'd beaten her. We had two prime suspects, Cecil Furnham, who was known to have been in her company when she left the bar. Furnham's record indicated that he was capable of committing the crime. On the other hand, the victim's husband had stated that he might kill her. He was unable to explain his movements at the time of the attack. He was unable to give us a tangible reason for the bruises on his hands. 
The only person who could tell us the true story was the victim herself, and we had the doctor's statement that she might not remember the events immediately leading up to the beating. At 10.14 a.m. that morning, we got a call from the general hospital telling us that Mrs. Dillon had regained consciousness. She was in condition to be questioned and was asking for her husband. We picked him up at the main jail and we went over to see Grace Dillon. Herman? Yes. You aren't mad, are you? You aren't still mad at me? No, dear, I'm not. That's good. I was afraid you're still mad at me. Do you want to tell us what happened, Miss Dillon? Who are you? Police officers. What are you doing here? We're trying to find out who did this to you. Wasn't anybody did it. I beg your pardon? Wasn't anybody did it. I did it myself. Silly. Did it all by myself. What do you mean, Miss Dillon? Herman and me had a fight and I walked out. I was going to leave him. I went down and had a few drinks. Just a few. And then I got to thinking about me and Herman, how I was such a bad wife. I got to thinking about the kids. You're not still mad at me, are you, Herman? Really? In your heart? No, Grace. I'm glad you're going to be all right. That's all that counts. <sighs> you want to tell us what happened, Miss Dillon? I was on my way home. I was going back. Cecil was walking with me. We came to a place in the street where there was some water because of the rain. I see. I stepped up on the curb to go around it. I didn't want to step in the water. And I fell. I fell down the hill and rolled all the way to the bottom. All the way to the next street. You want to go on? I remember falling. I remember lying in the street down below. I couldn't move. I don't know about anything else after that. Until just when you got here. Till then, I don't remember much of anything. Now, you mean that you fell yourself? Nobody beat you? No. Herman hit me when I was home. He got mad at me and hit me. But he was right. It's going to be different, I promise you. Just as long as you ain't still mad at me. That's all that matters that you ain't mad. Take it easy, honey. Everything's going to be okay now. Just take it easy and try to get some sleep. I'm going to make it up to you. All the bad times, I'll make them all up. I love you. I love you too, Grace. Go to sleep and get some rest. All right, honey. You don't want me anymore, Sergeant? No, I don't think so. We'll take you downtown and check you out there. kids. Well, things are going to be different. Well, I don't know. She just said she would. That's just it. Hmm? She said it so many times before. On November 17th, a meeting was held in the captain's office, Homicide Division, Los Angeles Police Department. In a moment, the results of that meeting. A 
petition was filed remanding the suspect to the county psychiatric unit for examination. Since no crime was committed, no legal action was taken against the suspect. The victim's husband, Herman James Dillon, was released from custody. <laughs>